This video is going to be for the palpation of coracobrachialis. So coracobrachialis is going to be originating off the coracoid process of the scapula, which I'm currently circling right now over top of pectoralis major, but we're going to be trying to find this origin underneath pectoralis major, similar to biceps brachii. We're going to be taking his arm and we're actually going to be starting more the insertion of this muscle and then work our way towards the origin because the insertion is much easier. So I put him in about 90 degrees of abduction and a full external rotation, which you can actually easily see his medial epicondyle, the humerus right here, which means that I'm looking at the medial shaft of his humerus. Now coracobrachialis is going to be inserting into the middle medial shaft. So again, you can eyeball it to start if you wanted to. I'm thinking about approximately halfway and I'm gonna be trying to feel in this region for the muscle when it starts to activate. Now, the other reason why I have full elbow flexion is because I want to take out biceps. Bicep does a lot of action at the elbow joint, but coraco does not. It's only going to be acting at the glenohumeral joint. So by bringing him into a maxed passive flexion at the elbow, I'm going to get more activation of coraco than I am with biceps. What he's going to try to do is bring his elbow or lecranon across his body, like so doing horizontal abduction. I'm going to let him win a little bit, so we're going to start up in this position. I'm going to add some resistance down, so I'm pushing down while he lifts up. And it's quite easy to find coracobrachialis at this point. So again, his biceps is a lot softer, but his coracobrachialis is quite taut. So this is how you would identify where the muscle belly is, and I'm going to follow that out, and I'm going to start to lose it when we get closer to that middle shaft. As he relaxes, and we take a look at that again, I'm right in the middle of that medial surface. So this is our insertion on the humerus. Another way to do that is that often people we say, oftentimes we say this is about the size of a whiteboard marker um, or a highlighter pen. So it's a little bit of a smaller muscle that we're looking for, but it's easily graspable. As it works its way up towards that axilla, it's gonna go underneath pectoralis major. So I'm gonna soften up pectoralis major by bringing him further into that horizontal deduction. Now it's really really important that they're not doing that for you and that you're doing it as passive as possible so that you're not getting pec major kind of resisting your palpation. Biceps brachii short hair is just above my fingers. I'm just below that and I'm going to sink underneath pectoralis major and work my way towards that coracoid process. So I can feel that right there and again I'm trying to get him to bring his elbow across his body a little bit for me. Good. And as soon as he does that I can feel coracobrachialis off of the coracoid process for our origin. If coracobrachialis was in anatomical, the actions that it's going to be performing is going to be flexion of the glenohumeral joint as well as adduction. So the combination would actually bring the person's arm in front of their forehead. So a good way to think about that is asking the person to bring their elbow in between their eyes. Okay. So a combination of flexion and abduction is its action, and coracobrachialis is innervated by the muscular cutaneous nerve. 